The pursuit of excellence invariably comes with spending a lot of time in the slog of sucking, in being terrible at something until you slowly, slowly hone your skills and get better and better. Whether it's sports and spending time drilling or learning an instrument or learning something in business or a new language, you have to embrace being bad in order to be able to make progress. And that is something that is particularly tricky if you are a perfectionist like me, because being bad at something, being perceived as anything less than stupendous is scary and painful and difficult. And so what do you do? You have goals that you want to achieve and yet you have these voices in your head that are giving you all of these reasons why you shouldn't. And I've shared a couple of videos recently talking about the ways that I have held myself back and how I'm really committing to doing things differently. And one of the principles that I'm using, I have borrowed from a book that is about something totally differently. So if you would like to learn more about the unsexy approach to achieving your goals, then let's go ahead and dive into things. Hello, my name is Emma Shermer Tamir. I am the CEO and co-founder of Marketing by Emma. And since 2016, I have been learning as I go about how to be a leader and a CEO and an entrepreneur, which means that I have spent quite a lot of time in spaces where I feel like I don't have the skills necessary to excel, but I figure it out. It's very uncomfortable as a perfectionist to do that, but I push through. I don't know where I get the drive to do that, but somehow I managed to find it. But when I'm trying totally new things, like this project of YouTube would be one example. It is so difficult for me to follow through on it. Now, now I'm in a pretty good rhythm and that's all thanks to applying an idea from personal finance to goal achievement. And I, I was inspired by the psychology of money. And my dad actually bought me this book and it has some great principles about how to build wealth. And one of the main concepts, really the whole central thesis of the book is that investing on a consistent basis for a long time will yield results due to the power of compounding interest. And it gives all of these examples of how somebody that started investing just a tiny bit of money when they were very young, but consistently did it over and over again, benefited from the compounding interest over time and eventually had built up a nice chunk of money in the bank and in the stock market and all of that. And so how can you apply that to goals? Well, the way that I'm doing that is really getting it in my mind that all of these little things that I'm doing are contributions towards a better future, that it's going to be little, tiny, incremental, gradual changes. But if I do it consistently, if I commit to doing it no matter what, I will learn, I will improve, I will grow. And over time, that will yield positive results. And those positive results can look like a lot of the different things. It's not like I'm guaranteed to have X number of subscribers or X number of uh, money coming in from YouTube. That's not even what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is really being clear about what the overarching goals are in whatever it is that you're doing and then what actions can you commit to that you can, can do over and over regardless of whether you're having a good day or a bad day, a good month or a bad year, and you know that you committed to doing that and you recognize that over time it will pay off. So Atomic Habits, James Clear, also talks about this idea. He talks about the concept of 1% 
better every day. So if you're just improving just a teeny tiny little bit, what would that actually look like when it, 1% every single day over a whole year is very significant. And so what you need to do in order to be able to actually apply this idea is to think about what are the actions that I can commit to. Another concept that James Clear talks about is the difference between goals and processes. So goals are kind of what's the direction that we're heading in, but it's actually the processes that you want to obsess over on a daily basis in order to be able to get you toward heading in the direction that you're wanting to head in. So the process from the psychology of money would be setting up a, a certain amount of money to be automatically deposited into an investment account on a set period of time, come rain, come shine. That's just money that is committed to investing. So similarly with YouTube, what does that mean for me? That means that I have a set schedule that I have committed to that I know that I am uploading at least one video every single week, no matter what. And what I'm doing to make that happen is I'm pre-filming so that I have a month's worth of content that I can upload so that I don't really have any excuses at all. So even if one of the videos has a problem and I need to go back and refilm that, even if my editor is sick and it takes them some time to get me the, the, the edited version back, none of that matters because I have done everything within my power to ensure that I have some extra runway there to be able to fulfill what it is that I have committed to. And so that means that I need to carve out time in my schedule to plan videos, to create thumbnails, to film, to think of different ideas, to do keyword research, to do all of those different things, all of those individual skills that one needs in order to be able to create content for YouTube. And so why don't you take a step back and think about what is it that I'm trying to achieve, set that big goal, and then what are the specific things that I need to do on a consistent basis, just like you would be investing on a consistent basis, and do those no matter what. And I know that's hard, and I know it's so easy to make excuses, and whether life gets in the way, or you feel busy, or you get sick, there is no shortage of reasons that are very justifiable for why you can't do something on a given day. And still, if you want to be able to look back a year from now or five years from now and feel that you really gave it your all to going for the goal that you want, then none of those excuses can matter and none of those excuses can get in your way. And so really think about how much do I want this? How important to me is this goal? And then what are the finite, specific, maybe even boring things that I can do and I don't need to be perfect? In fact, I'm going to recognize that I'm not going to be perfect. Perfection is not the goal. Instead, the goal is to stick to what you've committed to. And if you need to adjust a little bit and do a little bit less, but you're still doing the thing, then that's good enough. And so you want to do that over and over and over again. And eventually with time, you're going to start making progress. You, know, you might not be able to see it on a weekly basis or month to month, but when you look back over six months or a year, you'll be able to really see how far you've come. And so if we are taking it back to the investment analogy, if you're just putting in $10 a day, or $10 a week, that might seem like no money when you get to the end of the month. But if you look back at that over a year or five years or 10 years, how much does that build up to be, especially when you're adding in the, the interest on that? So really be thinking about that it's not about always feeling like you're making progress. In fact, sometimes you will feel like you're making no progress at all. I I feel that way today, if I'm being perfectly honest. I uploaded a video earlier today and it's not really performing that great. And I uploaded a video last week and it was one of my worst performing videos of the last few months, which makes me feel sad because it's a video that I'm really happy about with and I think has a lot of great value in it. That is the customer avatar video. So if you uh, want to give it a watch. It has some great insights to be thinking about how to really get clear about who your customers are and then how you can apply that to your marketing efforts. 
But if I'm just too narrow focused on that one investment deposit, then I'm going to feel like I'm doing nothing. And that's not the point. The point is to recognize that this is all part of a bigger picture and that each individual thing, each individual commitment that I uphold, the win is upholding the commitment. It's not in how many subscribers are generated or how many views it gets or how much watch time it has. Of course, all of those things are nice and they're great metrics to be used to determine what types of content to create in the future or how I might be able to improve my delivery or how I'm creating these videos. But it's just that. It's not it's not trying to get too bogged down in all of the little details. Similarly, taking it back to investing. Sometimes the market's up, sometimes the market is down. You don't wanna take all of your money out of the market when it's down, even though that's a lot of people's initial kind of natural inclinations. But we have plenty of examples in this book talking about how if you stay the course because the markets will eventually correct, and I'm, I'm not a financial expert, so please don't take any of this as financial advice. I'm purely using this as a concept and a metaphor to be able to apply to goals and achievement in other areas of life, but the market's eventually correct. So I know that if I continue to have underperforming videos and it's not just a matter of the time of year, then it's a question of, is this content not great? Am I not promoting it correctly? Do I need to improve my thumbnails? Are my titles not catchy enough? Is my keyword research lacking? So I have all of these areas of places that I can go and I can dig into and I can figure out what I need to do to improve. So what do you think? Is this helpful? Have you applied this principle to your own goal setting? What tips and tricks do you have when you are trying to learn something new and it feels difficult because you just know that you are going to not do the best job? Leave that in the comments below. I would love to know what tricks you've found to help you push through these hard per periods. If you liked this video, then please give it a like. Subscribe, join me on this journey. I create content about marketing, e-commerce and entrepreneurship, and I would love to see you back here. So thank you so much and I will see you soon. Bye.